What is going on Neon Nation and welcome back for some more Cyberpunk 2077 lore, courtesy of the world of Cyberpunk 2077 lore book, this time on the major mega corporations who have risen and stayed at the top of the pack over the years. Mega corporations in the Cyberpunk age are massive entities far beyond our modern day 21st century definitions. They operate on the same scale as small nations and many times supersede governments in terms of power, size, and scale. They dominate a wide variety of industries from agriculture to media to weapons and security technologies. In 2077, these mega corporations have reached such heights that entire cultures, laws, and systems revolve around their movements, their products, and their ideologies. These corporations have a strict and cutthroat hierarchy where upward mobility relies on deception, extortion, bribery, assassinations, and violence. Inefficiency or disloyalty are cardinal sins in the upper ranks of the mega corporations, and there's always someone right beneath you looking to fill your spot at the top. Let's get into some of the specific mega corporations who not only dominate the skylines, but also the cities. First, we have the most influential mega corporation in 2077, Arasaka, a corporate security corporation founded by Sasai Arasaka. This corporation is the biggest importer of Japan made merchandise to America and Europe. Founded in Tokyo at the beginning of the 20th century, Arasaka survived and thrived through wartime Japan, thanks largely to its founder Sasai and his foresight. After Sasai's death, Arasaka was passed into the hands of his son Saburo in 1960, who expanded Arasaka's services to banking and high tier security. The fourth corporate war and the victory of rival Militech crippled Arasaka as they were exiled back to Japan where they resumed their operations for the better part of a decade. During this time, Arasaka split into three factions. Internal struggle plagued Arasaka for decades after, although it was resolved prior to the unification war between the new USA and the Free States. Arasaka supported Night City, regaining its favor and returning to the city in 2070. Moving on, we have Arasaka's main rival Militech, one of the world's largest manufacturers of weapons and military vehicles founded by Antonio Lucesi in 1996. Hundreds of nations, governments, and private organizations rely on Militech for equipment and supplies, and their offerings include personal firearms, drones, tanks, aircrafts, ships, and ACPAs. In 2004, Militech really found its footing after the Ronin light assault rifle won the favor of the US military who contracted Militech to produce a sufficient weapon for its troops. Modern and affordable equipment is the name of the game for Militech, who post fourth corporate war was nationalized by President Elizabeth Kress, who used their assets to bolster the US military. Militech has since regained its independence from this role and is valued at 1.2 trillion euro dollars, that is when you include its new USA assets. Chinese corporation Kang Tao is one of the most recent mega corporations and a force to be reckoned with in the smart gun space. During the 50 years prior to 2077, Asia was a shadow of its former self, in tatters economically and politically. Over the span of rebuilding, Asia and China in particular underwent a radical change and along with this came the birth of Kang Tao. In the late 40s, a retired Chinese army colonel named Shimong Zhu was delegated to take over the reins of a collapsed defense company only afloat due to government subsidies. Four years later, this company emerged from the ashes as Kang Tao and in 2050 unveiled their A22B Chao smart pistol to the world market. With proper R&D and government funding, Kang Tao blew past other rivals in the weaponry space such as Nakoda and Tektronica, tripled its stock value and is now one of the biggest arms manufacturers competing with the likes of Tsunami and Arasaka. Next up, we have Knight Corp, one of the most elusive and mysterious corporations that have emerged in 2077. This company focuses solely on Night City and its affairs. The company is in charge of maintenance and upkeep of the city, which includes developing and maintaining contracts for building infrastructure like roads, tunnels, power plants, and sewage systems. It also has a philanthropic and progressive side, which includes children's charities and investments into ecology and renewable power. After the death of Knight City founder Richard Knight, his wife Miriam Knight created Knight Corp in an attempt to protect Knight's vision of a dream city. The mob wars after his death spurred the foundation to reach out for support from the mega corporations to end the violence and crime that had spread throughout the city. As it became more abundantly clear that to exact change you have to be ruthless, Miriam became more corpocentric in her views. In 2077, Knight Corp chugs along at a steady pace, choosing their battles wisely. Miriam Knight has stepped down from CEO long ago, but her legacy is upheld by her successors. Next up we have Trauma Team, a paramedical military service with rapid response times and the most distinguished clientele. Combat trained, equipped to the nines with the latest in medical, aerial, and offensive tech, Trauma Team will respond to a client based off a of beacon card or chip if their vitals drop below a certain threshold or they're called in. Response time and coverage depends on the membership tier, with the fastest and most responsive platinum tier being mere minutes anywhere in the city. TT also owns the biggest hospital in Night City and provides services to private customers as well as mega corporations. A trauma team unit consists of a pilot, two security specialists, and two paramedics. Kendachi is up next, a Japanese corporation who specializes in some of the finest melee weaponry 
like katanas and tantos, as well as chipware. This company's origins date back to 16th century Tokyo. During the first two decades of the 21st century, they joined the Adachi Company, bringing some of the most advanced orbital crystal and glass fiber mono weapons and flamethrowers, amongst many others, to the market. Moving on, we have Kuroshi Opticals, the industry leader in optics, design, and manufacturing. Whilst it is common knowledge that Kuroshi is on the top of its game when it comes to cyber optics as well as scanners, they are also heavily invested in orbital programs across Asia and America. They're rivals with the European Zeiss Company, and they were actively engaged in conflict during the Fourth Corporate War. A peace treaty was inevitably signed, and zones were divvied up as to not tread on each other's toes. In 2077, they do still covertly spy on each other, just in case another war erupts. Kiroshi uses bombastic advertising and frequently hire the most popular influencers, stars, and celebrities to be featured in their ads. Us cracks who use Kiroshi's more zany cyber optics are just one example of this. The last of the top dogs is Zetatech, a company specializing in computer hardware, software, wetware neural processors, microchips, and robotics. Government contracts kept Zetatech afloat during the rebuilding of Night City and has led Zetatech to blossom and diversify into avionics research, manufacturing, and transportation. Drones are a specific forte of Zetatech, as are aerodynes and gunships. They are one of the most iconic mega corporations and are used by almost all other corporations in some capacity. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. For more specifics on these individual corporations and megacorps in general, check out the playlist in the pinned comment, and for everything cyberpunk, join Neon Nation by subscribing to the Neon Arcade.